Hello, this is the Mushroom Wizard, and I'm back again with another presentation for you guys. And this one is concerning uh, not different species, like you may have seen so far, uh, but rather it is concerning a theme that is very important to the hobby of mushroom picking. And that is the edibility and toxicity of mushrooms that we find in Saskatchewan. So, what do we mean by edible? Now, Merriam-Webster defines edible as something that is suitable or safe to eat. By this definition, very few mushrooms that you'll find in the forest are actually edible, if any. Uh, the same applies to other food items as well. Uh, so if you look down at those photos on the left-hand side, that's a potato. You don't just dig one up out of the ground and stick it in your mouth. Uh, it would not be edible to you. You would not be able to digest it properly. If it's green, it can actually be fairly toxic, make you very sick. So you have to cook that, as is the case, you may have guessed, with mushrooms. In the middle, you have peanuts. Now, peanuts are not toxic, um, so to say, but for certain people, the allergic reaction they have when they eat or encounter peanuts uh, can be fatal. So for them, this might as well be a death cap. Uh, on the right hand side, we have a puffer fish. Puffer fish is a delicacy in some Asian countries. Uh, however, if you prepare it or um, eat the wrong part of it, uh, it will kill you. It is It contains a very potent neurotoxin. Now, what do we mean by toxic? Merriam-Webster, again, defines toxic as containing or being poisonous uh, material, especially when capable of causing death or debilitation. So by that definition, most mushrooms, if not all, are initially toxic that we are picking. Here are some common toxic mushrooms that we eat or are eaten elsewhere. On the left, you have a morel. Now, a morel is actually fairly toxic if you eat it raw. It has to be cooked. Uh, in the middle, you take that a step further, you have a honey mushroom. Now, if anybody has ever eaten an undercooked honey mushroom, they know just how upsetting that can be to their guts. Uh, on the right-hand side, that is Rosella emetica. Rosella emetica in Western European culture has a notorious reputation. It has the name of the sickener, the common name. Now, it can make you sick. It does contain sesquiterpins, so it, it is mildly toxic. It will give you mild gastrointestinal distress. But for the most part, I'm of the firm belief that uh, this notoriety stems from our inability to appreciate uh, the flavor profile of extremely spicy acrid foods. That is very different in other parts of the world. This mushroom is commonly eaten in places like Turkey and other parts of Eurasia, where it is, it has the those mild toxins removed through various processes, either cooking or pickling, and then that spiciness remains, but they like it. So here, that spiciness is of such an extreme degree that it could cause certain people with that mild toxin combined to vomit. So that's where that notoriety comes from. It, it, it's not actually a mushroom that could seriously harm you. And some would say it's quite a delicacy. Not me, uh, it's a bit too spicy for me as well. So some mushroom facts. All mushrooms contain chitin, which is indigestible until cooked. That could be chitin. I don't know how to say it properly uh, because I really don't go out very much anymore. and. Instead of hearing people talk, I see words on a screen or in a book. So, chitin or chitin. Uh, many mushrooms that are eaten contain mild to moderate toxins. And just to go back to that, that chitin, chitin is actually what you find in your fingernails, right? So that, that's not, uh, not something that you can digest easily. Uh, the cell walls of mushrooms contain this, and it actually locks nutrients like vitamins and stuff like that so so that's that's a problem there many mushrooms are of unknown edibility so when 
I'm doing these presentations, I'm going to be covering several hundred mushrooms. And at the end of that, you need to realize that that is a very small percentage of what we have in Saskatchewan. The vast majority of mushrooms here are going to be small and brown, um, and they're going to be mushrooms that are of unknown edibility. And when I say unknown edibility, it's just nobody has, has nobody knows who knows, right? Or they could be unpalatable, so nobody really bothers to try eating them. Or they could be of a texture that can't really be consumed easily, very wooden or corky. Um, but it's just not known. Many mushrooms have unique and high allergen potential. Remember the peanut. Now there are people that will be allergic to all mushrooms. Um, but for the most part, when you have a mushroom allergy, it's to a specific mushroom or group of mushrooms because each species and to some extent, even certain uh, genre will have their own potential to cause an allergic reaction within people. Some of, some of these mushrooms, it's a very high percentage of people that are allergic to them or have a sensitivity to them. A good example would be the white dapperling Leucoagaricus leucothites, whereas um, it is to such an extent that some guidebooks will list this as toxic when in fact it just has a reaction in some people. Uh, for myself, I do enjoy these mushrooms. I'm usually fine with them. Well, I'm always fine with them. I wouldn't be eating them otherwise. However, there are some mushrooms uh, that I do have a mild response to where my mouth goes strangely numb. So some mushrooms are toxic if combined with alcohol. We'll talk about that in a second. Some mushrooms contain psychoactive chemicals. We'll talk about that as well. Some mushrooms have medicinal qualities and some mushrooms can seriously harm or kill you. So here are some obvious conclusions from what we've already spoken about. Wild mushrooms should be cooked. So by cooking that mushroom, not only do you break down uh, the, the, the uh, potential toxins that the mushroom may have, um, some of them at least, uh, it breaks down the chitin and it releases all those nutrients and that it is no longer indigestible. It's no longer going to be a hard process for your stomach to go through. You should always be cooking wild mushrooms. I'd never eat a mushroom until you were certain of its identity. That should be an obvious one. Uh, online opinions will only take you so far. You have to do your own research. So what I mean by that, if you go online, say if you go to Saskatchewan mushroom picking and you're like, I found this mushroom, what is it? And somebody's like, oh, it's this. And then you go and eat it and you get sick. The liability is still on you because what you needed to do was treat that as a suggestion, not as a um, fact. And then you go and you do your own research. Start with the mushrooms that you know, and then you expand slowly, right? If you're gonna go out and look for new mushrooms, when you find a new mushroom, maybe limit it to one or two species, or else photograph other ones, or, or whatever you may wanna do. Um, and we'll get to the reason why here in a second. Uh, when eating a new mushroom, eat a very small serving first. Now, main reason for that is in case you have an allergic reaction. Don't eat several new species at one time. And the reason for that is because if I go home with seven new species and I make myself this delightful little mushroom mix and I eat it and I have an allergic reaction, uh, what mushroom did it? You know, that can be really, really annoying because you're gonna have to go through all those species again, try them and have that reaction again, right? And that can really ruin a hobby. Science trumps folklore. That should be self-explanatory. What I mean by that? Some mushroom myths that we need to dispel. Touching some mushrooms is dangerous. No, it is not. Um, now, if you go online, you're going to find some uh, some uh, references to mushrooms causing adverse skin reactions. 
if you really delve into it, you will notice that the rarity of this is so, um, like for instance, if you look at a specific mushroom that is said to have the potential to do this, like say something out of Asia, often is where they're from, you'll find that it's limited to a single case occurrence where my guess is that they likely touch poison ivy 10 minutes beforehand or something similar to that, uh, considering as nobody else has ever had that reaction or else they have a very strange skin condition or allergy that is just not very common. For the most part, touching mushrooms here in Saskatchewan will not hurt you. You do not need to wear gloves. Tasting and spitting toxic mushrooms will hurt you. That is a myth. So a poisonous mushroom must be ingested in your stomach to harm you. Uh, if you take a, a very poisonous mushroom and you put it on your tongue and hold it there and then spit it out, nothing's going to happen. So the importance of this is that for some types of mushrooms like brittle gills, for instance, that we'll talk about in a different presentation, uh, there are some species that you really do need to do a taste test on them to determine what they are. So just keep that in mind. Uh, cooking break this down all poison. I said that we cook our wild mushrooms to break down the poisons. These are for the edible mushrooms because like I said, they all contain mild toxins. Well, some of them will contain mild toxins. Uh, however, the really serious toxins that harm people or kill them, those toxins do not break down in heat. Poisonous mushrooms are usually white. Uh, you could substitute white for any color or shape or attributes. Uh, there is no way to determine how a poisonous mushroom looks because there's a lot of them, okay? Uh, this belief stems from people not wanting to accidentally eat the destroying angel. Now keep in mind the destroying angel is fairly rare. Uh, if you were to avoid mushrooms that could seriously harm you, uh, that are common and have the same toxins as destroying angels, uh, you would want to avoid green mushrooms. So that that is that is a myth. Also, if you avoid white, white mushrooms, you're avoiding button mushrooms, you're avoiding uh, oyster mushrooms, you're avoiding a lot of really good edible mushrooms. It's much better to just learn them. Poisonous mushrooms taste bad. Actually, this is a myth. Um, this is an important one to, to tackle because uh, the reason why some of these mushrooms kill so many people is because they taste really good. I have a ranking system for edible mushrooms in my presentations. You've probably seen them if you've seen any of them. Uh, I determine the worth of a mushroom's palatability based upon the best known of all mushrooms, and that is the button mushroom. If you've never eaten a button mushroom, what are you doing? in a mushroom picking hobby. So choice is something that tastes better than a button mushroom. So that's something I would give to a morel or a chanterelle. Uh, good. This is a taste that is comparable in quality, though not flavor, to a button mushroom. Poor is a taste that is less desirable and unpalatable is something that's bitter or mealy or gross. So a ranking system for toxicity that I'm going to be using for presentations on toxic mushrooms are um, in terms of severity. So mild, these are symptoms that are not long lasting or of great concern. Moderate are symptoms that last longer than eight hours and should be monitored in case things like uh, dehydration occur. Uh, dangerous are symptoms that warrant hospitalization. They can also do damage to your body. Uh, potentially fatal are symptoms that can cause death in certain cases or they can do irreparable damage. And lethal is uh, symptoms that often cause death or do irreparable damage. Amatoxins, here's the big bad right here. Uh, so this is a type of toxin that uh, is found in uh, quite a few mushrooms in Saskatchewan. This is the one that also accounts for probably 80 to 90% of mushroom deaths per year. So the symptoms include colicky abdominal pain, diarrhea, vomiting, nausea, hypotension, hypoglycemia, jaundice, delirium, seizures, coma, liver and kidney failure, and death. 
Arelanine is just as bad, but not as common. So the symptoms include nausea, vomiting, anorexia, lethargy, intense thirst, burning urination, headaches, cold sensations and shivering, so basically getting the chills, uh, kidney failure, and death. And arelanine is the reason why people avoid the Quartinarius genus, because it's very hard to ID mushrooms in that genus, and this toxin is known to occur in an unknown number of them. Gyromitrin. These symptoms include abdominal pain, vomiting, severe diarrhea, liver and kidney damage, red blood cell damage, and death. And as a footnote there, gyromitrin is also carcinogenic. Now why is that important? This toxin actually can be broken down with heat to some extent, uh, and people eat mushrooms with gyromitrin. They're considered delicacies in Europe. Uh, and they do a double parboil technique where they boil the mushroom twice and then the toxin ends up in the water. But this toxin is uh, strong enough that the fumes can actually make you quite sick. Uh, so you have to do it outside. So why people would want to go through that, I don't know. Uh, however, the very small amount of gyromatron left, even if it's only 1% from what it was and it's no longer harming your body, to the point of death, it is still a carcinogen. Muscarin. This is a very common uh, toxin found in Saskatchewan, especially in the Clytocybe and the Inocybe species. Uh, symptoms include salivation, sweating, tears, lactation in pregnant women, severe vomiting, vision problems, irregular pulse, low blood pressure, difficulty breathing, heart palpitations, I forgot to include that there, and death. So this is a mushroom that, generally speaking, doesn't kill people unless they are uh, people with uh, heart issues or respiratory issues or people who are elderly. Um, so still fairly serious. You don't want to mess with that. Fasciculal E and F. So here's a nasty little one that only occurs in the sulfur tuft Unfortunately, the sulfur tuft is incredibly uh, gregarious and common in Saskatchewan woodlands. So the symptoms include diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, impaired vision, paralysis, kidney damage, and potentially death. So it doesn't kill very often, but you put two and two together here. Um, and keep in mind as well that these symptoms last uh, regularly up to 48 hours. So if you're paralyzed, blind, and you're vomiting, and your kidneys are being damaged for two days straight, that puts you in a pretty prone position if there's no one else around but you. Uh, and that can lead to death as well. Coprine. This is a relatively mild toxin. So coprine is actually not toxic to you unless you're drinking alcohol. When the two combine, what happens is flushing and reddening of the face, salivation, tingling in the limbs, headaches, anxiety, and uh, nausea if you've eaten enough of them, but that could also be the alcohol. Uh, so it's not going to do much more than that to you. Avoid it regardless. Avoid the combination of the two. Polyporic acid. So here, again, um, proof that polypores are not a universally safe mushroom to eat. The symptoms of polyporic acid poisoning include nausea, purple urine, blurred vision, muscle weakness, anorexia, ulcers, kidney damage. Okay, so there are other toxins as well, many unknown. We'll address them as they occur in the presentations. So medicinal mushrooms. Some mushrooms have scientifically supported medicinal qualities, such as antioxidants, anti-inflammatory components, vitamin D is a big one, uh, psilocybin and muscimol are becoming more and more considered as uh, medicinal uh, chemicals. Uh, there's a whole range of them. 
uh, some mushrooms have anecdotally supported or traditional healing benefits. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a mycologist. I'm a hobbyist. I'm not even actually a wizard, guys. Um, so I'm only going to mention this in passing. Uh, I will tell you in our sections on medicinal mushrooms what sort of testing has gone into the determining of certain qualities. Like has it been found in uh, animal testings or human trials, etc. But I'm not going to bash or promote anything here. Psychoactive mushrooms. So Saskatchewan has several species of psychoactive mushrooms. Uh, I think six or seven at least. Uh, the species containing psilocybin and psilocin are illegal to possess or distribute in Saskatchewan for consumption. Species containing ibotenic acid and muscimol are legal to possess and distribute. So there is no, no uh, worry there. I neither discourage nor encourage the use of psychoactive mushrooms. Um, I'm a fan, <laughs> but uh, beyond that, this is up to you. I'm not your mother and I'm not responsible for what happens. So different flavors that you'll find in mushrooms because uh, it's not just a button mushroom flavor. If all you've ever known is a button mushroom and that's what you're expecting when you go picking mushrooms, you'll be pleasantly surprised or extremely disappointed, depending upon your own subjectivity. Some of the flowers that you, or flavors that you can expect are flour or bread, <clears throat> pepper, cayenne pepper, so extremely hot, uh, lemons, vinegar, maple syrup uh, is one, uh, curry. Some will taste like cooked shrimp or cooked crab or even like lobster. Uh, some will taste like button mushrooms, quite a few actually. Another common flavor is radishes. Now mushrooms also have a whole range of odors <clears throat> and we use that to determine sometimes what species we're looking at. <clears throat> so Common ones would be flour, iodine, oranges, vinegar, flowers like irises, once again cooked shrimp, pen ink is a good one to know, fish, anise or black licorice, as well as rotting meat. And I'm going to go quickly through uh, some of the ways in which you can uh, prepare or preserve your mushrooms because often uh, on a good mushroom picking uh, jaunt, you will have far more than you can eat at a sitting. So pickling is a great way to keep mushrooms, especially mushrooms like Rosala's. Dehydrating. I have a mushroom dehydrator myself. Some mushrooms actually taste much better after they've been dehydrated. Two examples of my opinion would be the red capped bolletes that so many people pick here as well as morels. Uh, as well, it's a great way to store them. You can store them in a glass jar or in, uh, in a, something that's uh, some sort of bag that removes oxygen. That's how you want to go about it in moisture. Uh, preserving an oil. So that's a great way to do so. Almost like an antipasta. You can freeze mushrooms. Powdering mushrooms. Okay, so when you powder a mushroom, that means you dehydrate it and then you kind of grind it down to a powder. Why would you want to do this? Uh, a mushroom soup base is one reason. Also, there's some mushrooms that have uh, very unique flavors or else a very hot flavor that people will powder and use as a condiment or as like a spice. Smoked mushrooms. So you can make mushroom jerky. Uh, my favorite mushroom to do this with is anything from the Sarcodon genus, which are the uh, hawkswing or scaly hedgehogs, or the turtle hedgehog. Candied mushrooms, especially mushrooms with a sweet flavor profile, can either be uh, candied or caramelized. And that's it for today. So I hope you enjoyed that uh, little presentation. And um, if you like what you see, make sure you hit the subscribe or like buttons. 
there in YouTube. And uh, hope to see you next time. This is the Mushroom Wizard, and have yourself a great day.